Hi, Thomas Brinsko with Big Magazine, and we're here at the Gulf Coast Industry Forum with the Texas Rail Commissioner, Ryan Sitton. Ryan, thanks for joining us for a couple minutes today. I'm glad to do it. Hey, um, I want to start off with a couple local questions here and work okay. out from there. Uh, I know um, I want to talk about infrastructure. Okay. Locally with the Houston Ship Channel, mm -hmm. we've got some dredging issues going on that uh, it always seems like every year. It's always a challenge for us. And sure. I understand it's the federal government's purview, but what can the state do to really help push the federal government to help with our infrastructure problem on the ship channel? It's a great question. And I will tell you, there is infrastructure, not just in the ship channel, but roads, water, access, I mean, basic mm -hmm. schools, I mean, infrastructure in a growing economy is the challenge. And that's the role today of, of public office is a role right. of government. Mm -hmm. um, you're right, we compete for those dollars at the federal level mm -hmm. in things like dredging the port. And what, what we can do is be as loud an advocate as we can. Mm -hmm. And what we really need is when, I mentioned this just talking on stage a minute ago, Republicans and Democrats advocating together, look, the people of this state, the people of this country, they want mm -hmm. affordable, reliable energy, affordable, reliable mm -hmm. commodities. Mm -hmm. We produce that when you give us the right infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So help us do this and the people of this country are going to be happy. That's what they yeah. want. And this this role is your role to play. Yeah. Moving away from Houston, you look at the whole state. What mm -hmm. do you think the biggest challenges for energy infrastructure are with the state of Texas right now? Right now it's pipelines. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of talk about this that in the in the Permian Basin we have ramped up our oil production. Of course, private business I'm talking about has increased its oil, its natural gas production, and there isn't enough pipelines to move that product around. Uh, if you get past that over the next couple of years, on the back end that's going to be import export facilities mm -hmm. because we have a lot of demand in places like Japan and China. Sure. And in Europe for our natural gas and the, the more the export that we have. The drivers are all international. Exactly. We've got to get it to the ports. That's it. So that, that would be the addition. You, you give us enough pipeline capacity, mm -hmm. enough uh, enough export facilities, and we'll, we'll be in great shape. Mm -hmm. What do you think the biggest challenges are for the energy market, not just in Texas, but the entire Gulf Coast or the U.S. right now? Hmm. Other than infrastructure, which mm -hmm. is really, th that's hard to argue that one. Mm -hmm. When you look beyond the next couple of years, it's probably, it's probably people. Mm -hmm. We have been talking, I've been in this industry for 20 years, a private business uh, before I was an elected official, and I have never mm -hmm. been in the industry mm -hmm. in my 20 years of doing where we weren't talking about the baby boomers leaving sure. the industry yeah. and who's going to be the next generation. More people are eligible for retirement than ever are, before. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, it's funny, you look around, some of my guys, some guys I came in with in their, in their early and mid-40s are leading some of these major mm -hmm companies because we're the only ones that were left. You're having a large group come in now, but as I talked about on stage a minute ago, we need operators, we need welders, we need machinists. Uh, and these are high paying, great career sure. jobs that we have, I, I'm, I, I think unfortunately elected officials have denigrated some of those. We talk about everyone really should be in college. Why? Why? What a fantastic career that is for someone with yeah. really great skills. So advocating for that so that people are coming in today and in five and ten years are ready to lead all over the place in this industry, that's our biggest, our next biggest issue. Well, it's a good problem to have, obviously. It is. Uh, any fear about a global recession that could really uh, jam up the demand side of this equation? We always had that fear, and what I mean is, you know, you, you uh, we, the, the, the globe moves in cycles. In fact, it's roughly every 10 years you have a recession. The last one was big. The couple before that were, were medium-sized. Uh, as I mentioned a minute ago, some people are predicting a, a big one in 2020, 2021. Uh, you know, all we can do is be prepared in terms of, uh, of being smart with construction, not getting yeah. over levered, planning out for, for long term demand. If a recession comes, we weather our way through it. But at the end of the day, global demand for oil, global demand for natural gas has gone up virtually every year for the 70 years I've been tracking it. Even during recessions, it may grow a little slower, but it grows. If we overproduce, over overexpand, we'll feel the pain more in those years. But if we're well positioned, we'll weather the storm and come out on the back end, we'll be okay. Well, thanks for your time, Ryan. Appreciate your it. service to our state. Thank you. God bless. Thank you.